read a short passage from a story called Duet. It takes place in the mountains of western North Carolina. And it's about uh, two friends, two uh, working men uh, who have been friends for a long time. And they live out in the, out in the country. And one of the um, gentlemen uh, dies in, a, in an accident with a rifle. And now his friend uh, is lost and very sad and really doesn't quite know what to do. And so he's trying to come to terms with this. And this is what he says. Friday, I laid out of work. I didn't want to see the people we worked with every day. I didn't want to hear what they'd be saying. I did not want to answer questions. Seeing that I wasn't part of Caney Barham's family, old man McCracken, our boss, might well dock my pay. Well, let him. He'd done it before and I didn't starve. Maybe I never wanted to work again. Put on my red wool shirt and my hunting boots and warmed up a, day, a cup of day-old coffee and drank it while cleaning my 12-gauge. Then I got into my tan jacket and found my cap and went out. I didn't carry any shells. The heart wasn't in me to be killing. I just wanted the gun solid in my hands as I walked along. It was the early April season with the air crisp and cool and the sky scrubbed blue. The first minute I set foot in Coulter's Grove, I felt better. I liked the pine needles springy underfoot and the smell of trees and the sunlight coming through in rags and the silence everywhere about. The silence I could feel on my skin at first. Walked a long time, not following a true path, just keeping my feet where they would make the least noise. After half an hour, looked like I was headed toward Ember Mountain, and I figured I could climb it if I desired, setting one foot before the other and feeling no strain. Not today. When I came to Burning Creek at the foot, I decided not to climb. I knelt and cupped up three mouthfuls of water in my hand and then sat on a rock on the creek bank with my shotgun across my knees. There I sat for the longest time. A comfort to me here was the sound of the water rolling over the stones. That's a clean sound to listen to for hours. Always the same, but never exactly the same, one minute to the next. A sound going on forever, but with little changes inside it that never exactly repeat. You can make it louder or softer while you listen, just by the way you concentrate. If a music group, especially one with a good banjo or mandolin, could capture some of this creek sound and get it right, they would be famous, and folks would come from anywhere to hear them. There are musicians who can make sounds of every kind, the wind in the treetops and freight trains picking up speed and fox hunts on the mountaintop. I never heard anyone try to get the creek sound down. I sat and listened. Little by little, the hard iron went out of my sadness. All night I'd had bad dreams I couldn't remember except they left my mind dark, and now that darkness lightened. I wasn't reconciled, and I surely was not happy, but I didn't have that cold, bitter taste in my throat. I'd come out to the place of purest sadness, sad but free and floating, sad but natural feeling. It was fitting and proper how I felt now, and I knew for the first time I'd be able to sing, and it wouldn't unman me with Caney lying by in his coffin. I sat a while longer, got up, walked home. The sun was higher now, and the day was getting warm. Mm -hmm.